What's going on everybody? I have a few thoughts on the new FAQ 8th edition 40k and the future of 40k. If you've watched my previous video, I talked about the future of 40k is Primaris Marines and everybody right now is talking about the FAQ, which I believe GW did say they are still intending to hit their September mark, so within the next week or so we should see that FAQ. Um, I think everybody agrees they want to see the same fixes, like unanimously, and that is, well, almost unanimously, everybody knows that there needs to be something done with CP, command points, sharing command points between detachments, regenerating command points between detachments, and so on. Um, I'm not sure that the Castellan is under-costed, it is the amount of CP that the guard detachments can pump into it that makes it so strong. So I'd hope they just change the CP first and then address points in a chapter approved in December when we all get to buy a new book. How do you think the FAQ, like I'm not really sure what else it would change. Uh, I think it could hit the nine demon princes or whatever, trying to like pick little demon princes out here and there. Um, I don't think it'll happen quite yet, but I do think Anari, uh, they should just really turn those characters into Craft World and or Drakari or Harlequin or whatever the heck they are. Uh, there doesn't, like Anari is just some nonsense thing that was tagged on to the end of 7th edition and now there has no place in the game. I'm not saying that because I played against them or anything, I just think it's pretty stupid that every Eldar army looks the same. Same reason why we all hate the command point. Igar, uh, Knight, Blood Angel thing. Definitely need a fix on these Blood Angel captains. Like, insane how much they're doing and how much they show up. But, uh, all of that aside, um, well, I think we might see... It would be kind of neat if we saw a Primaris point drop on some more stuff, because I'm not sure they're probably very happy with the lack of Primaris Marines on their tables at events. And obviously I haven't done a head count, but most Space Marine armies seem like they're taking scouts. Most, uh, like, well, there's no Chaos Primaris, but I was going to say, like, some, like, the Dark Angels will take a unit of Hellblasters, and sometimes a couple here and there will show up. But I don't think there's a lot of all Primaris armies, which is what I think they were really hoping for with the release of them. Um, we will get some changes to them to make them more appealing soon, I believe. I also heard on a podcast some people mention, uh, I think it was Long Wars podcast. I haven't been listening to a lot of podcasts lately. I've been painting and listening to like art stuff and audiobooks. But I think they mentioned that... Uh, there is a Space Marine Volume 2 book coming, and uh, which would be like bring them more in line now that they're late, you know, kind of the beginning of 8th edition, which is super interesting. I can already taste the tears of Space Marine players, but uh, like they'll cry about having to buy the book, but they'll love the fact that their new book is cool. So they, uh, if that's coming i don't know that might be a little early but i know some of those guys over there on that podcast really pay attention to like the rumors and the leaks and things like that so you know if somebody has some inside information on 40k stuff they're probably the ones that are gonna you know sniff it out online and tell the tell it to us so that's pretty cool if there is a Space Marine 2 codex, I guess it would be a lot of points adjustments, uh, some rules changes, and uh, maybe trying to make it a little more appealing to play them, and specifically, I think, playing them as Primaris, which I do think maybe a points drop I could see. A points drop also for elite things like uh, Plague Marines, Rubik Marines, things like that. I think they could use a little points drop just to be a little more... I don't know, uh, appealing to take. And it doesn't need to be huge, but if you dropped them one or two points and you were planning on taking 20 of them, I mean, that's saving 40 points. That's another squad of 10 cultists or whatever. I think there's a problem in 8th edition with 
uh, the amount of dice small cheap big units get because they're like oh they're small and they're cheap so we're gonna give them a bunch of shots or a bunch of attacks and hand in combat and you can just take piles of them the only way to combat it is chess clocks which I don't think is the ideal situation for that but it's what was really hurting a lot of the more like just the regular space marine he's not as good as a three cultists like they'll just on the battlefield it just doesn't work out that he's that good he's certainly not as good as you know two mortar squads or whatever that are the same points as him that have no line of sight 2d6 bolter shots or whatever the heck they do i guess a squad of two of them would be 2d6 so i think even if they don't necessarily lower the points of this stuff i think all of this bottom barrel stuff just goes up a point and i think that makes a big difference or somewhat of a difference right if you're taking 90 of something and it all went up one point or even two maybe not two but like there doesn't i feel like there doesn't need to be four point models in the game um, there doesn't need to be like even the five six point area seems a little low for the game and that's what's causing the gap i guess to feel like it's not worth it to take like a normal space brain right because you get a lot more bodies which mean a lot in scenarios usually for board control objective holding everything plus just the amount of dice you get to roll so you're gonna roll some sixes that why won't you just take a whole bunch more cultists or a whole bunch more whatever eye guard in your detachment than you would space marines or chaos space marines you know that sort of thing it's like why would you take a whole bunch of rubric marines when you could take cultists and zangors and they're way way cheaper and they're pretty awesome right so that's the problem i think it might i don't know how do you feel about that like i don't know if it would happen but if they took the bottom floor and just lifted up the points so the cheap stuff wasn't so cheap so you didn't have you know, like you didn't take so much of it and it would or if you did it affected you greatly whereas opposed to yeah you could still have one unit of 40 or 30 or whatever something but it becomes more unlikely that you would have 90 of the same troop choice and big 30 man blocks or whatever now that being said i don't think the faqs or even chapter proof is probably going to address that because the next two books feel i'm not very familiar with gene Steeler cult but if they're an eye guard and horde of small bug detachment uh they both seem like they're very much horde armies it does look like orcs are going to be pushed as cult of speed maybe they'll do like some mech and death dread and killer can kind of stratagem builds and stuff but we all know when you put cheap something out there with multiple either shots or attacks you roll enough dice and that's what the people take and they take a lot of them so i don't see it's weird that the next two books and reinforce the same horde meta i guess you could call it i don't really like using the word meta but uh, that's interesting so another point just the end here there's only two more books three if you count anari and then sisters of battle which whatever uh there's like a, there's like a gap i feel like like i don't know if the sisters are going to be ready I don't know how much is coming out for the orcs. I don't know how much is coming out for the Gene Steel Cult. They've shown us quite a few models. But after them, which feels like it's all this year, and it's, I think Gene Steel Cult's this year, I'm not sure. Uh, and then Sisters Beta will be in Chapter Prove, which means that book's not out yet. But then it feels like there's quite a gap of, you know, what's coming next. And this is where I think the Primaris come, like in full effect or at least more reinforcements more units right i want to see the i want to see the primaris devastator squad with the super heavy bolters just like <laughs> but uh i think that would be pretty cool pretty exciting for my death watch army that i'm working on fairly slowly at the moment i am if you've been following the channel i've been painting like a madman 
putting it up on my eBay, trying to sell like painted miniatures and stuff. I'm working on Necromunda narrative campaign. I'm working on Death Watch. Um, doing everything right now. And then, oh, mainly I'm also painting this board game, The Others, which I really need to get some kind of uh, video or, I don't know what you would call it, like a photo shoot so I can put that up for you guys. I kind of want to do one where I can talk through it a bit. Uh, which I haven't quite figured out how I want to do that. I need to probably learn how to record a video and then after the fact put vocal over it. So that'll be something I hopefully will know how to do by Christmas because I do want to learn that. So those are my thoughts on the FAQ coming up. I don't know. I've been working a lot on the others, board game and some other stuff. Gloomhaven, Necromunda, all this other stuff that I've been pretty excited about. So I have skipped out on the last couple tournaments that have been local at the store. Uh, I do, I'm usually there when they're going on still. I'm just painting or doing something else, but um, they are very, very night heavy. And when something becomes so blatantly like obvious, whether or not it's the best, and I don't think it's necessarily always the best, I don't think it's a guaranteed win, but I think it's poison to the game when something's so dominantly popular because it's just, it's like, I don't know. It's, it loses like your fun factor, I guess. There's still a great community here in Phoenix and a whole variety of armies, but that's a lot of knights right now. So it hasn't looked interesting. Main reason though I haven't played in the event is just because I haven't finished painting up my Death Watch or really anything new from my ad mech. And, you know, that's just all there is to that. But super interesting to see this FAQ. Usually, I think as a community, we build the FAQ up in our minds to be some epic, massive game changer. You know, we're using hot clickbait keywords like FAQ game changer. I'm going to title this video FAQ game changer. Um, the, but in reality, it's always like <laughs> pox walkers can run. Like somebody will ask something like, <laughs> can pox walkers run? And then they'll be like, yes, they can roll a D six when they advance or whatever. And you're like, who's asking that question? And how many people had to ask it for it to get put in the FAQ? And how come they didn't address some of this other stuff? Which then we all, after the fact, say, oh yeah, that's coming in chapter approved, and it's a never-ending kind of cycle. But that's how it happens. So, after Gene Steeler Colt, yeah, we know um, Sisters of Valor coming, but are we talking Emperor's Children and Slanesh for AOS? That could be a big release that they're just going to drop. A book, a couple new kits, definitely some new Slanesh Demons, they've already told us that. Um... And then, I don't know, like, it'd be cool to see a new faction, another new faction for AOS, a new 40k faction's probably not coming before Sisters of Adel are done, that's just my guess, but unless they're going to drop some books and a couple kits, so I guess an Emperor's Children book would be a new faction, kind of like Custodes, or something like that, where they don't have to put out like a ton, although Emperor's Children... If they got treated like Death Guard or Thousand Sons, that's quite a few kits, so I think they might treat it like Thousand Sons since they'll have a lot of crossover with AOS. But I want to know your predictions on the future of releases. Like just tinfoil hat, like what do, what do you think might be coming? I'm guessing Emperor's Children because I'm pretty sure there's a Slanesh release coming. And uh, what are your predictions for the FAQ? Or are you like me and you kind of think the FAQ turns out to be a whole lot of nothing and then we wait until chapter proof. So FAQ Game Changer, please subscribe.